Independence, she said, was at the heart of the election, and she's with me now here in the studio. Nicola Sturgeon, in an independent mm. Scotland, will children be better able to read and write than they are now? Well, regardless of whether or not in the future Scotland becomes independent, uh, in Scotland right now we're focusing very much on improving standards in education. Uh, if we look at our education system, we've expanded early years education. We have a new school curriculum in place, which has been praised by the OECD. We have record numbers of young people uh, leaving school with higher passes, advanced higher passes, and going on into Educa further education or training or employment. We have mm. identified a particular issue with literacy and numeracy and we also are determined to accelerate the progress mm. in closing the attainment gap. Because so we have a massive programme of reform frankly, underway right now to do that. On literacy, your record is absolutely terrible. Um, your own um, government figures show that you have, uh, among 13 and 14 year olds, only h less than half are now performing well in reading and writing. And that's gone down from 70% mm -hmm. in just a few years well, been, under the SNP. Well, let me, f firstly, let me say I've been very open that that's not good enough. But just to put that into context, we have uh, a survey that uh, measures pupils in the second year of secondary school, mm -hmm. but measures them against the standards that they are expected to achieve in the third year of secondary school. And we have other information that show that by the time young people are in the third year, more than 80% are reaching the required level. But we have, as I said, we've got a new curriculum in place, Curriculum for Excellence. It's been praised by the OECD, but they've made certain recommendations to to us about how we improve the teaching of literacy and numeracy. So right do, now we've got a new national know, improvement sorry. framework, we have an attainment challenge, we have an attainment fund putting significant extra resources okay. into education. Frameworks and challenges and fund. Do you know what is going wrong in Scottish schools? Uh, we have had some advice that the new curriculum is not focusing... The, the new curriculum for excellence, which I'm sure you're familiar with, mm -hmm. is about uh, educating young people to be good citizens, to uh, not just absorb but facts and figures. To read no, and write as well. I, I'm, I'm coming on to accept that point, to uh, encourage mm. young people not just to absorb facts and figures, but to be able to analyse that and make sense of the world they live in. It's the right thing to do. But we have had some advice that we need to have more of a focus within that curriculum on literacy and numeracy. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. So we've introduced new benchmarks for the teaching of literacy and numeracy. And, you know, I'm, I'm interested in watching... Benchmarks and all the rest of it. Well, but under the SNP, things have got worse and quite well, dramatically I, I, so. I would, I would challenge that in terms of the, uh, the general performance of education. I mean, I look at the situation right numeracy now... Numeracy and literacy, there's no question I, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm not mm. denying that in terms of literacy and numeracy. And I'm telling you what we are doing to address that. And you say, well, frameworks and benchmarks. I, I look at the debate in England just now about uh, falling budgets in schools. We've just taken a decision to increase the budgets that schools have by £120 million, money going direct to head teachers, which is giving them the ability to invest in measures that they think will improve literacy because and numeracy. Because I mean, you're 700 teachers mm. short at the moment in Scotland, well, so actually, you need to spend it, some money. Um, teach, teaching recruitment is a, a challenge, not just in Scotland, but in many mm. countries. That's why right now uh, we are increasing teacher intake. The General Teaching Council in Scotland is looking at different ways to bring different kinds of people into teaching. We're trying okay. to encourage retired teachers to come back into teaching. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm being very frank about you it. You pay I, them some more, that might help. Uh, well, we have negotiations with uh, teaching unions, as EIS. is the case in England, about you know the pay and conditions uh, of teachers. That's certainly uh, one of the issues that we've always got to, to keep in mind. But we also need to be both frank about the challenges we've got in education. Some of the challenges are not unique to Scotland, but we also have to recognise that the fundamentals mm. of Scottish education in many respects are very strong. And I, I repeat again, we now have record numbers of young people coming out of our schools with higher and advanced higher passes and okay. going into what we call positive destinations. So uh, I'm focused on improving these areas that we need to improve, but also making sure uh, that we don't do a disservice to teachers and pupils across the country by saying everything about Scottish education is bad because emphatically it is it not. Is. All right, well, let's, let's return to what you <coughs> said in the independence <coughs> blueprint in 2013 <coughs> about the PISA or OECD <coughs> rankings. You said Scottish pupils outperform the OECD average in reading and science. The latest results show that we have halted <coughs> a period of relative international decline since 2000. Can you tell us what's happened since then? No, we, we have seen that situation not as good as we want it to be. 
look, Andrew, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and deny that we have the PISA study. We also have what's called SSLN, which was a study, uh, the latest version of which was published last week. I should say it's a sample survey and it looks at actually quite small numbers of pupils. One of the things we have done is introducing, it's the National Improvement Framework. You didn't challenge the PISA to... rankings when they were going well for you. You can hardly challenge but them now they're going so badly. Did, I didn't challenge them. <laughs> Right. I, I so said accept, I accepted you, you accept them. them. I absolutely, I know, and I've said this many times mm. before, I know how important a good education has been to me in my life. I want every young person in Scotland to have the best education. The vast majority of young people in Scotland do get the best of education, but there are areas where we need to do better, and, and I am not shying away from that. And yet, that. under the SNP, something serious has gone wrong. Scotland used well, to be one of the most best educated and, countries and in, many, in the world. On many measures, it's still is. And you have all is. the powers, you have all the powers mm. to change this, mm -hmm. and yet things are going backwards. Well. On literacy and numeracy we have a particular challenge, mm. but on many other measures of Scottish education that is just not true. We are not going back. Literacy and numeracy are kind no, of look, important. Look, you're, I, mean, I think you're, you're, you're trying to conduct this information at uh, this interview on the basis that I'm being defensive here. I'm not being defensive. I absolutely right. readily accept uh, the areas where we okay. need to do better. That's why we have put such effort into the initiatives and the reforms that we are taking forward. And the point I was going to make uh, earlier on, which I didn't get the chance to finish, is that we are actually uh, introducing more transparency so that I can be held more to account. So instead of sample surveys like the ones we've got, we will have information on every pupil in Scotland at the uh, required levels, broken down, not just by local authority, you, but school by school, so that there'll be no hiding place for right. any politician and, on the performance and, and, and of you, Scottish education. And you education. said not so long ago that you wanted to be Absolutely. judged by this and your neck would be on the line. Absolutely. And I mean, I, you're looking a little Mary Queen of Scots at the moment on that I, 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 don't, uh, I don't wish to be Mary Queen of Scots. Look, I've been First Minister for two and a half years and I said when I became First Minister mm. that this was what I wanted to be the defining priority of however many years I am First Minister. And I I uh, hold to okay. that. So by the uh, time that we're at the next Scottish election, I want to see improvement. And, you know, we're talking about literacy and numeracy. The other uh, big challenge we've got in Scotland, which again is not unique to Scotland, is to close the attainment gap between uh, the richest Absolutely. and the poorest young people. And, and we're you're very still behind focused England on, on that? Well, on, on some measures, and the, we, we don't mm. measure it in exactly the same way. You and I have okay. had the discussion about university entrance before, Indeed. where the measurements are different in Scotland and England. But in a sense, I'm, I'm not sitting here wanting right. to make those comparisons. I want Scotland to be the best on its own terms. Let's move move on to another aspect of domestic policy. Is mm. it a scandal if nurses have to use food banks because yes. of their low pay? And that is happening in Scotland. Look. According to the Scottish mm. Royal College of mm -hmm. Nursing spokespeople, that is happening mm -hmm. in Scotland. And again, you have the power as the Scottish Parliament mm -hmm. to set <coughs> public sector pay. Absolutely. You could raise taxes and you could pay Scottish nurses properly. Why Look, don't you? Well, we, we have uh, work to tackle OP. Let me set out what happens here with nurses' pay, and it's the same in the rest of the UK as it is in Scotland. We have the independent pay review body, and it makes recommendations. The Scottish Government, unlike the Westminster Government, has always accepted those recommendations. Uh, we have had a period of pay uh, restraint in the public sector because of our determination to protect they've, jobs. They've lost 14% in terms yeah, of real value you, be, be, of the past period be, of time, and you could correct this. We will continue to work through the pay review body to make sure that nurses get uh, the pay they deserve. I do accept that. But you we've opposed had a... higher pay for nurses this week. Well, look, no, and we didn't. The, I'm trying... the Royal College of Nursing is now talking look, about strike action. Let me let me just set this out because we work through the pay review body. We have agreed with the unions that we're going to jointly okay. commission some research. But there's another important point here because of the action we've taken in Scotland. Uh, on low pay and because of the commitment we gave that nurses would always get their entitlement to progression. A newly qualified uh, nurse in Scotland uh, is paid £300 more than a newly qualified nurse in England. Uh, somebody at the okay. bottom level of Agenda for Change, it's much more than that. We've also protected the nurse bursary uh, and we're not asking nurse uh, students to pay tuition fees. So it's tough for nurses out there, but we have done far more than any other government in the UK to try to protect the pay of nurses. OK, you have said that independence mm. is at the heart of this choice and you've talked a lot about material changes mm. um, and that you watch the, 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 the way public opinion <coughs> is going in Scotland. If the Conservatives move ahead and you fall back in this election, is that not a material well, change? Let, let's wait and see who wins 
the election in I Scotland. If at the and, start well, that can I can I just set out my position here because it is important uh, for me. This is a question of at the end of the Brexit process, does Scotland get a choice about our future? You know, the position of the Tories and Labour UK wide is that no matter how badly the Brexit negotiations go, people should just have to like it or lump it. I don't think that's right. So at the end of the Brexit process, I believe people in Scotland should have a choice about our own future. But there's a more immediate priority in this election. After we've left or before we've left? Sorry. At the end of the process, so that when the terms of Brexit are clear and people can compare that with the, the terms and the implications of independence. But the point I was going to make is in this election, there's actually a more immediate priority and opportunity for Scotland and that is about making sure our voice is heard in the Brexit negotiations. This is an important sure. point because there is a lot of concern even among some people who voted leave that we are headed down the road of a very extreme Brexit. Now the Scottish Government previously published proposals that would have accepted we were leaving the EU but mm -hmm. would have protected our place in the single market. The Prime Minister dismissed those proposals out of hand. This election well, she actually it was impractical and well, impossible she, to she didn't run. look at them seriously. So this election mm -hmm. actually uh, gives the Scottish people the chance to give real democratic legitimacy to those proposals. So my message in this election on Brexit is whether you voted Leave or Remain, whether you were yes or no in 2014, if you vote right. SNP, you're strengthening my hand to make sure that Scotland's voice is heard mm -hmm. in these negotiations and that we don't sacrifice jobs in our economy. We can press the case for Scotland's place in the single market. A lot of SNP votes voters voted to leave Absolutely. the EU. You have always said in the past <clears throat> that Scotland must be a full member of the EU after independence. And it's being suggested mm. by some people that you may move to say, actually, EFTA would be all right. Is that the case? Well, we, we published compromise. Would EFTA we, be all right? Well, if Scotland is independent, our position, our position always has been, as long as I've been in the SNP, and continues to be that we want Scotland to be a full member of the European Union. What we did uh, towards Including the end the of... the Euro? Uh, we, we don't want to go into the Euro, and no mm -hmm. member of the EU can be forced into the Euro, uh, and you know Sweden is one of the examples of that. But what we did at the end of last year was recognise that you know people, some people voted Remain, a majority in Scotland voted Remain, some voted Leave, Scotland voted differently to yeah, sure. England. So we tried to see if there was compromise ground mm -hmm. and we put forward proposals that would have accepted we were leaving the EU as part of the UK, but tried to protect okay. our single market but membership. Can, now, can I just ask you very briefly, a sort of yes of or no, I'm afraid, mm -hmm. would mem Scottish membership, an independent Scottish membership of EFTA be an acceptable compromise in these circumstances, yes or no? My position is I want Scotland to be in the EU. Now, we have to set out, if we're in an independence mm -hmm. referendum and we're not in that right now, uh, the process for re gaining or retaining, depending on where we are in the Brexit process, uh, EU membership. Now, it may be that we have a phased approach to that by necessity. Uh, and EFTA first, I, EU later well, kind of thing. It may be by necessity, even if we didn't want mm. that, that was, now, we, we have to set that out at the time because there are still some uncertainties, many uncertainties around the Brexit process. But right. my, in this election, if we want to uh, have a chance of protecting our place in the single market on which 80,000 Scottish jobs depend, then vote SNP to strengthen our hand to try to do that. You got the line that. out at the end there. Nicola Sturgeon, thanks for joining <laughs> Thank us in you. the studio in London.